beginning you attend church as an event. Now, many people attend church as an event. Well, I'm just going to go on Sunday, and so it's like I'm going to go to the ball game. I'm going to go to, you know, the movies. You know, I'm going to go to, you know, whatever. And in, instead of looking at church as an event, church should be community. It should be a community where we all are connecting as a body and that we feel like I'm part of the body. And in, in, in 1 Corinthians 12, Jesus, I mean, Paul talks about the church. He talks about the body. In 1 Corinthians 12 and verses 12, Paul talks about the body of Christ. Now, when we talk about the body of Christ, we're talking about, somebody say the church. We're talking about the church. And many times, you heard me say earlier, many people talk about what's wrong with the church. But I've come to ask you today, what's right about the church? There's a lot of things right about the church. And I was talking to one man the other day. He said, I said, I, want you to, I really want you to come to church. This is what he says. Well, I don't think so. He said, I, when I was a boy, my mom forced me to go to church. As if it was a bad thing. And many of us were raised in a Christian home. When we say a Christian home, I mean a faith of Christianity. Doesn't mean we were saved, was raised that way. And what we what happens is we go through the motions of because I went to church, it denotes that I'm saved, and that's not the issue. Because, because you go to church doesn't mean you're saved. It's kind of like when you go to McDonald's to make you a hamburger. Because you go doesn't mean you're all there. And so in 1 Corinthians 12, Paul reads to us, and I want to, reading from the King James Version, and let me go there, and I'm going to read it from the uh, NIV Version because I really want to kind of explain a little bit more. Let's read verses 12 to verse 14 together in the, K, in the King James verse. Read, for as a body is one and has many members, all the members of that one body being many are one body also in Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, having been made all made to drink unto one spirit. For the body is not one. For the body is not one member, but what? Many members. Praise God. Amen. I want to preach to you this morning about being a part of the body. You may be seated this morning. Being part of the body. Somebody say, I love my church. Why do you love your church? Why do you love your church? Do you have a church? Where do you call home? Where do you park? Where do you where do you call home? Many times people are kind of just kind of wondering and they, you know, but being a part of a church is like being a part of a community. It's like having a family. You know, you have brothers and you have sisters, you have a mother, you have a father, and being a part of that family, we all have a responsibility of being part of the family unit. And there's expectations as being part of the family. It's a, the expectation for a father is provide, for a mother to nurture, for the children to be obedient and, and, and support and to help out. And so it's the same way with the church. The word church means ecclesia, which means it called out ones. That God has called us out, out of darkness into his marvelous light. So when we got saved, somebody say saved. When I got saved, God delivered me and made me part of the body of Christ. Now, when you look in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, Paul say number one, he talks about unity among the believers. Unity among the believers. He said, for as a body is one and it has many members, all the members of that one body. Somebody said one body. Being many are one body, so also is Christ. So Paul talks about the body of Christ, us being part of the body. Just like he said earlier, if you read on in verses 15, if the foot shall say, because I am not the hands, 
I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear should say, because I am not of the eyes, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were a hearing, where were the smelling? But now has God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it has pleased him. So all of us are here because God has placed us here. I mentioned to you earlier, we grow better where God plants us. Amen. And so he talks about the body of Christ as Christ the body. Now go with me, if you would, to Matthew chapter 26. In Matthew 26, in verse 26, Jesus at the Last Supper, and he taught, he began to have dinner with the disciples, and he began to share with them the word of the Lord. And as he began to share with them, he began to break bread with them. The word communion means fellowship. Somebody say fellowship. One of the things that's very important in any church is to have fellowship. You need to connect with people in your local assembly. No man is an island to himself. You will see people who come to church and they just leave. They have no connection. They're not part of the body. So when church is over, they, they split. They just run out. Not shaking anybody's hand. Not even fellowshipping. And that can be many reasons because it. Sometimes people get hurt in church. Sometimes people feel like, I don't want to get to know anybody. I don't want anybody to know my problem. Sometimes we hide behind that. Because there's something about relationship. Somebody say relationship. you got to learn to build relationship and get along with people. One of, the greatest, one of the greatest things you must learn to master is getting along with people. Amen. you got to learn how to connect with people. But in Matthew 26 and 26, and they that were eating, Jesus took the bread and blessed it and break it and gave to his disciples and said, take and what? This is my, Jesus said, when we take of the, the, the communion, and the communion is very important for us to take communion because as we do, we do show forth the Lord is coming back. He is, he is going to return. He is a soon coming king. And as long as we take communion, we're saying, God, I know that you're coming back one day and I want to be ready. Somebody said, be ready when the Lord comes. He said, take and eat for this is my body, the body of Christ. So the church is a body of Christ. It is made up of many members, people from all all over the globe, people from all walks of life, Jews, Gentiles, bond, free, Paul, we all are different, but we are part of the, somebody say the body. We are part of the body of Christ, and the body cannot function without you. He said, number one, where would, if, if, if the whole body was to hear him, what would the eyes be, the seeing be? If the whole body was a leg, I mean, you would need every part of the body to play a major function. So it can be a part of the body. The Bible says we are fitly framed together, compassed by that which if every joint supplies according to the effectual works and in the measure of every part, made increase of the body unto an edifying of itself in love. So Paul talks about the body. So if Christ, if the church is the body of Christ, it should have divisions. Remember when Jesus was on the cross and they came and they was going to break the bones of the thieves on the cross and they came to Jesus and they was going to break his bones, but they didn't do it. Why? Because it was prophesied that Jesus' bones would not be broken. The church shouldn't be divided. The church should, somebody say, be one. The church should be one. It is the body. So when you're not here, you're missed. When you're not in your place, the church suffers. So that you need to be in place so the church can move forward. Now it's kind of like without, none of us really been blind in here. Amen. Thank God we're able to see. Somebody say praise the Lord. But just think if you was blind. Just think if your kidney stopped working. 
We have people who are, their kidneys stop working, their liver stop working. And when their kidneys stop, they have to go to dialysis and get things right again. What I'm telling you is that, you know what, you don't think of your kidneys every morning you get up. You don't say, man, I've got some good kidneys here. Y'all look really well. But you don't say that until you get up one morning and realize I got to go, go to dialysis. I got I to get it right. I got to get my, my blood taken care of. And so what happens is that we don't think about our, 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 our fingers, even your thumb. Somebody say my thumb. My thumb is important. Do you not know if you didn't have your thumb, you couldn't pick up objects without your thumb being there? It's important. So every part of the body is important. So when you're not in place, the body suffers. It's kind of like when you cut your hand. You know, what happens is, is that it, all the different things begin to come together to, to heal that wound. And it's the same way in the church. Amen. We're to be supportive of one another. Somebody say, I love my church. And so being a part of the body. In St. John chapter 19, let's go there. In John chapter 19 and 31. And it says here, the Jews therefore, because it was a preparation that the body should not be remain on the cross on the Sabbath day. And so they wouldn't allow the body to remain on the cross because the Sabbath was coming. So that Friday had to take the body down. Okay. They besought Pilate that the legs may be broken or that it might be taken away. Then they came the soldiers and break the legs of the first and of the other, which were crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus, they saw that he was dead already. And they broke, they break not his leg. So the body was to stay together. Jesus' body, and the Bible says uh, one, of the, one of the disciples, Joseph, wanted Jesus' body. And he got Jesus' body and he put it in the tomb. We know that Jesus' body was all fitly framed together. And it represents, somebody shout, the church. It represented the church. For God so loved that he gave, that God loved the church, that he gave his only begotten son. What really compelled God to give was his love for one another. Somebody clap your hands. May a love for him, his love for us. So we must learn how to connect with the body. Let me ask you a question. Are you connected to the local body? There cannot be any ministry outside the local church. All ministry stems from the local church. You may call yourself an evangelist. You may call yourself a, a, a teacher. You may call yourself a prophet, but you got to be connected to the local assembly. When you look at the New Testament church, go with me to the book of Acts chapter 1. In the book of Acts chapter 1, you see the church here. It is birthed in the book of Acts. It comes alive in the book of Acts. The Bible says in chapter 1, they, they up in the upper room. The 120 is in the upper room. Mary, mother, mother of Jesus, up in the upper room. And they are all there waiting for the power of the Holy Ghost to come down. And then we see here in Acts chapter 2, in the church, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they're all in one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. Notice the Bible says, with, with one accord, somebody said one accord, in one place. There has to be unity in the body for a church to move forward. Listen to me. For a church to move forward, there has to be a spirit of unity. Let me tell you something. The devil fights unity in a home. A husband, a wife, and children, he want to split the home. He want to divide the home. He want divorce to happen because you know why? Because if divorce does happen, somebody's going to suffer. And he knows that. He tried to bring division in the church and bring division in the government. The, word is, the world is so divided. And we're living in that, that time when things are so divided. And somehow the church, somebody said the church, Paul said it like this. I mean, John said in 1 John chapter 3, he said, Beloved, he tells us to love one another. 
Tell your neighbor, reach out, tell your neighbor, I love you. You don't really mean it, do you? You look the other way when you told them. You didn't even look at them. What is it about looking people in the eye and saying, I love you? I ain't talking about your spouse. You know, we, was, we, 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 had, we were on a camping trip yesterday, and we had a great time. It, it rained all Friday night. We had a great time. And so the boys did devotion on, on that, that Saturday morning. Isaac read about Jonathan and David and how they loved one another and how that they embraced one another and how that they had a relationship. And the Bible says that, that Jonathan's heart was knitted to David's heart. It was a relationship. Somebody said relationship. It wasn't a physical relationship. It was a brother love type of relationship. That they loved one another. Amen. And they they supported one another. They helped one another. And Jonathan's heart was knit to David's heart because they had that, that filios type of love. Amen. And so here we see the moment we should have that same type of love, somebody say, in the church. Jesus said this, by this will all men know you, my disciples. How? By the prophesy, how you sing, how you play, how you preach. No. He said, you'll, you'll know them by their love for one another. Somebody clap your hands. <laughs> by this will all men know you, my disciples, when you have what? Love one for another. It's powerful. Bible tells us that love bears all things, hopes all things, believeth all things. So in the book of Acts chapter 2, there was in one accordance, a church was birthed. They were filled with the Holy Ghost. But if we read on in chapter 2, after they were filled with the Holy Ghost, the Bible said they stayed connected. And the Bible says it like this. The Bible says in verse 42, of Acts chapter 42, Acts chapter 2, verse 42, and they continued steadfast in the apostle doctrine, fellowship, and breaking of bread. And in what? Prayer. Here what's happening. They, they, they stayed steadfast in the doctrine. They had fellowship. They had communion. And they had prayer. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles, and, and all, somebody say all, that believeth were to, somebody say together. They wasn't split apart. They wasn't over there, over there. They were all, somebody say together. We come to church, somebody say together. The reason why we come to church on a Sunday is that the New Testament church commemorated Jesus' resurrection by meeting on a Sunday morning. So as Christians, we meet on Sunday morning, which separate us from the Jewish religion. Okay, so they come together. Somebody said together. Praise God. They came together, the Bible says. And, and the Bible says, and had all things common. Verse 45, and they sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men. Somebody said all men. They saw someone in need. They saw a sister that was at need. They saw John needed a job. That Sally needed a, a, her rent. Somebody help her with her rent. And Billy needed a, a ride. And someone said, hey, let's all pitch in and help each other. The church should be a place where we help each other. Amen. By this will all men know you, my disciples. Why? When you have love. Come on, help me out here. Somebody say love. Love is a powerful tool. But you know what love does? Love forgives. Love forgives. When you're done wrong, when you feel like, you know, somebody done you wrong, love forgives. It forgets. It bears all things. It hopes all things. And the Bible, it goes on. And it says here, and they sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. In verse 46, and they continued daily 
Somebody say, in one accord. One accord in the temple, breaking bread from a house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart and praising God and having, somebody say, favor with all the people. And the Lord did what? He added to the church. When there was love, when there was responsibility, when people start sharing, the church began to grow. Give me five people to clap your hands. Now, I can't pay your rent every day, every month. And you shouldn't expect people to pay your rent. Or implore you when you're lazy. I know that hurt, and that hurt a lot. But the Bible says an unfaithful man is like a tooth out of joint. It is unfaithful. When you get ready to bite on it, it's going to fall every time. And so, you know, people say, well, the church didn't help me. Nobody loves me. You know, the Bible says to be have friends, you got to first make yourself friendly. You got to learn how to build relationships. You know, sometimes people are good at tearing down bridges, but they're not good at building bridges. You must learn how to build bridges. Learn to connect in a congregation. Even on your job, many times we go to work and we see the person next to us and the keeper the next door, next next to us. But do we really have a relationship with them? Sometimes we just go to work and go home. That's all we do. But we must learn how to connect with people because Christianity is about relationship. It's about getting along. Somebody say getting along. I don't care how much we speak in tongues. I don't care how much we proper lie, proper sigh, okay? I'm telling you, you got to have love. And if you don't have love, it is like a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. You don't just walk by somebody and don't speak. Tell me he's preaching now. You know, you don't, you don't walk by Sally because you got an attitude. You don't walk by Bill because you don't like Bill. Come on, grow up. Be more spiritual. You know, we, 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 we on, this, on this shadow level when it comes to God and shouting and praising the Lord. And I'm all for that. I really am. But Jesus said, by this will all men know that you're my disciples when you have what? Love one for another. Learning to forgive, learning to embrace, learning to look beyond faults. You know, when you're in a family, I have two brothers and one sister, and, uh, and we all didn't get along at times. You know, I wanted a chicken leg and he wanted the thigh. You know? But in every family, Every family got one. Every family got one. You know, you know what I'm talking about. You got one. You got, some of y'all got five. But in every family, there's one, Daryl, in every family. You going to sleep, Daryl? I got your eyes closed. I can't see your eyes over here. But every family got one. But, you know, but in Kirk's family, there were two of them. So one got to be the devil, another got to be the good angel. No, seriously, I'm sorry, Ed Richard. <laughs> but every family got one. And every time Bill comes around, he said, Lord, help us. Come, Bill. Don't disturb Bill. Don't get Bill riled up. Because if Bill get riled up, we all have to get out of here. You know, Bill, when Bill was born, he, he hit the floor. <laughs> but, you know, Bill is still your brother. Or how about Uncle Bob? Uncle Bob comes to the family reunion. He's all loud, acting crazy. But he's still Uncle Bob. Hey, Uncle Bob, how you doing, Uncle Bob? Hi! Doing good. But you know, if you start talking about politics, 
church, Bob turns into a different person. Some things you learn, you leave it on. Let a dead dog lie. Some things you don't, some things are not worth going to bat over. One man said, if you're going to go to war, no way you're going to war. And some things you learn, you don't, you don't, you don't bother, a, you don't bother a beehive. You don't go and start throwing stones at it. I was a little boy one time, we had this, we had this tree, it had a hole in it. And I had bees, and he was making honey in it. So we would go out there and take the rocks and start hitting it. Wow. Now, look, not what boys do, just start hitting it. And one day we hit that thing, the boy bees came out after us. Stop the thing. <laughs> and they wouldn't, they wouldn't bother nobody. They wouldn't bother somebody say nobody. They were agitating the bees. Now we do people, we started agitating people. There's some folks they're born to agitate. Their middle name is agitate. So, so when you go to chapter three, in chapter three, Peter and John goes up to the hour of prayer to pray in the temple. They see this man who was lame. They begin to turn to him. He's looking for a handout. You know, and sometimes there are people who have legitimate needs, even in the church. And this man had a legitimate need. He, he, he was sitting at the gate there looking for help. And I think there's nothing wrong with that. But how long he'd been sitting there, we have no clue. But I like what Peter said. When Peter finished... The man was looking for, you know, give me some coins, give me some coins. Peter said, I don't have any silver. I don't have any gold to give you. You know what Peter did? Peter prayed for him. Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I to thee in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Rise and walk. It's what people need is some, some good spiritual advice. What some people need is what to know about living right and doing right. He said, silver and gold have I none. And the Bible said immediately he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. The church should be a place where people are lifted. You know, I don't want to go to church either every time I preach. I'm always downing people. You know, I'm always being negative. And I am not a negative preacher. I'm a very positive preacher. Now, because I get on to you about something because of this and you've been doing this, and I say, well, you shouldn't be doing it. You should be more faithful. You should, you know, you shouldn't be living with her, him. If you ain't married, don't get mad at me. I'm just telling you the truth. Thank God for a good pastor. Somebody say, clap your hands. Everybody need a good pastor in your life. You need someone to, to speak in your life. I'm not calling you to, to, to sing kumbaya. I'm calling you to check on you, praying for you. So pastor, call, answer. <laughs> Let's move on. Mine's come up private. <laughs> I don't want to hear any more. <laughs> I just, I, I felt it. <laughs> I felt it. You know what, Pastor, why you don't give your number to everybody in the church? Well, if I did, I couldn't get anything done. And not that. If, if somebody needs to get a hold of me, you can always call the office. This Brittany's always there. She, she's there 24 7. <laughs> Not quite. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm overseas, and you call me, hey, Pastor, my dog died. And I love your dog. I promise you, I love your dog. I'm preaching a conference, and I'm in a boardroom, and you know, and, 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 and I'm trying to concentrate and trying to get do this and 
phone rings, and he goes, I hate that. So a message comes to Sister Brittany. And there's a legitimate need, I'm there. I love pastoring, love people. So don't because you don't have my number doesn't mean I don't love you. Come on, somebody, I'm talking to you. The thing because, you know, they get mad at me because I, I can't get, I don't have my pastor's number. You don't have the, govern, the governor's number either. You don't, have, you don't have the mayor's number either. But you can get a hold to the mayor. You can get a hold to the governor if you really need to. Oh, Lord, I messed up already. I am, I am in deep water. I, I feel the boat sinking already. <laughs> you going to love me anyway? Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. I have a lot of good people in this church that, that really support this ministry, and, and, if you, and, they, they, and, and they're there to help you. They're there to help and, and support. I've got ministers. I have, I have staff here, and I'm thank God for that. Amen. Let's move forward. Somebody said move forward. So the Bible says here that they was in one accord, and the Bible says, let's go to, let's go to chapter 4. In chapter 4, Peter was in prison. I mean, Peter and John when it was in prison, and the, person, the church was persecuted. When the church was persecuted, the church grew because it was persecuted. You know, the early church was strengthened by persecution. And sometimes it is through difficulties and things that happen in our life that help us to grow. See, you never can get where you need to go until you're challenged. And so Peter's in prison. John's in prison. They are beaten and put in prison. And the council said, if you preach the name of Jesus again, we're going to kill you. Peter said, I'm already a dead man already. Church grew. But when you... If you read in verses 32... Chapter 4, verse 32. And the multitude of them that believers were one heart, one soul. Neither said any of them that all of the thing which was possessed was his own. But they had all, what? Things common. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. Notice what verse 34. And neither was there any among them that what? For as many as were possessors of land and houses sold them and brought the price of the things that were sold. And they laid them down at the apostle feed and distributed them was made. The distribution was made for, made unto every man according to, as he had what need. So they can they they begin to give it out clothes and you know land and helping people. But also in Acts chapter five, the Bible says Ananias and Sapphira has got an idea. So you know what? We're gonna lie to the Holy Ghost. We're gonna lie to the man of God. But they didn't realize they they were lying to Peter. You know, I wouldn't lie to a man of God if I were you. I really wouldn't. He, the Bible said Ananias and Sapphira, his wife, sold their possessions. But verse 2 says they kept back part of the price. They, they, they gave some of it away. Someone said they gave some of it away. Come on, say it with me. They gave some away. But they kept some of it, right? Now, was God mad at them for keeping some of it? Probably not. But here's the problem, they lied about it. In the New Testament, you see in Acts chapter 5 that liars and thieves are exposed. In the New Testament. And you see here that the Bible says to Satan had filled the heart to lie. But, but Peter said unto the Ananias, why has Satan filled thy heart 
to lie, not to Peter, but to the Holy Ghost. And you kept part, kept back part, the price of the land. While it remained, this is what Peter said, was it not thy own? After it was sold, was it not in thy own power? And Peter goes on. And verse 5 said, when Ananias heard the word, he fell down and gave up the ghost. Somebody say, he gave up the ghost. And the young men rose and wounded him up and carried him out and buried him. A few hours later, his wife comes over. Peter challenged her, now, did y'all sell this land for X number of dollars? Oh, yes, pastor, yes, pastor, yeah. And Peter said in verses 9, Peter said to her, how is it that you have agreed together to tempt the spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door, and they shall carry thee out. Verse 10, and then fell she down straightway at his feet and yielded up the ghost. You know what happened? They had revival. Verses 11, and the great fear came upon the what? All the church. Upon as many as heard these things. And by the hand of the apostle were many signs and wonders brought among the people. The people start dying in the church. People get saved. That's what happened. And so you see the New Testament here. The New Testament church. Growth took place. In Acts chapter 2, because of doctrine, Acts 5, exposed liars and, th and thieves. Chapter 6, they appointed men to do ministry. And you see the church coming to The church has always had problems. Church has always had problems. Anybody know why the church already had, always had problems? Because it's people. In Perfect people. And what people want to do, they want to blame the church. The church has always had liars. Thieves. And we get mad. And, 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 but the church is made up of people. Somebody say people. People. Imperfect people. People who make mistakes, people who, who uh, do the wrong thing, but thank God, somebody say, for grace. Thank God for grace. You know, Noah, you know, Noah, the ark represented the, the, the church. And the Bible says that Noah put all the animals in the ark. And they went in and for for many months they sell. But you know what? The water separated Noah from iniquity and the death. Noah was in the ark. I'd rather be in the ark where the stink is than to be outside where everybody else is dying. Somebody say, I'm glad to be in the church. Somebody say, I'm glad to be in the church. I'm glad to be in the church. Yes, it has its problems. Yes, it has its issues. Yes, but the greatest thing, it is still the body of Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That the church would exist, thrive. Church is not perfect because people, And if we ever get over that, that the pastor is not perfect, that you're not perfect, and that you even say things sometimes that's contrary and wrong, you realize the 
church is a body of believers. People of like precious faith. John didn't mean, mean to hurt your feelings. Say, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. But get out of shape. Don't get mad when we we'll take our toys and go home. Because the music is too loud. But the wind turns it up too high. Well, I don't like the songs they sing. Where's those songs? I, I want to hear Amazing Grace, and we do sing it, but you ain't hear what we do. <laughs> Y'all, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. Cut the tape, cut the tape. Cut the tape. Put that on YouTube. I think I'm doing the moonwalk, you know. why, you know, we come to church and we say, well, you know, when is pastor going to preach on so-and-so, so-and-so, but you keep missing church, but you ain't here on Wednesday night, or, you know, you know, but I don't know how they spend all that money, but, but when it, where's that money going? It's going to pay bills. Asking, well, well, I would go. I would go, but you know what? I, I, I don't like Brittany. <laughs> when I call the office, she don't ever answers. You know, I don't like the color of those chairs. Then he get ready those chairs, and we all can complain about what we don't like about the church. There are things I don't like here either. And I'm the pastor. I'm the pastor. But I've learned that some things you don't, you leave alone. You don't bother. Let God takes care of some things. And some things are not worth fighting over. We're going to sing two hymns or three hymns, fine. You know, say, hey, you know what? I don't like all the songs they sing either. I really don't. I'm being serious. I really don't. But I'm not leading the song. You know, and you know, I wish things were different too. You know, I'm the pastor church. But you learn that something's not worth fighting over. Whether we the, the, the toilet tissue is over or under doesn't make a difference as long as we got something in the bathroom. bathroom. As long as it's in the restroom. Whether you like blue or not, does it make a difference? You know? That's the problem. You got to learn how to get along. Somebody say get along. Learn how to get along in the church. It's one of the greatest things you can ever learn in life. Somebody say in life. is to get along with people. I had this one person one time. They don't go to church here. Believe me. So don't start trying to figure things out. Some of you Bible scholars here. But this person, man, I'm telling you, you couldn't please them to save your life. They were all, they're always grumpy, complaining. But I noticed they kept moving in from job to job. They didn't get, and it wasn't, not that they wanted to move, they got fired. And I'm wondering, and one day I got a chance to talk to him. It was always the other person's problem. They never, it never added up where maybe I am at fault, but they kept losing. They would get fired. They would work there for six months, a year, and get into it with the boss. Word of wisdom. Your boss control your paycheck. Be 
be polite, be nice. If you don't like working there, find you another job. But don't talk about your boss from everybody else. You know what? I'm telling you something. Sometimes God will put you in a job to help you. And you want to move from that job. You want to get away from that job. I'd be glad when God moved me. I've been praying and asking the God to move me. And he's going to do it. And God said, I'm teaching you a valuable lesson. I'm teaching you how to submit and hold your tongue. This is, look at someone and say, he is pastoring. And, and this person couldn't hold a job because they kept moving from place to place, place to place. You know, and I'm saying, no wonder they couldn't get along in the church. No wonder I kept making them upset, no matter how nice I was. And I, don't go around, I, don't, I don't go around hurting people's feelings. That's not me. If I did, please forgive me. But I'm always trying to be nice. It pays, it costs you nothing to be nice to people. I don't care how rude they are. So you got to learn how to be on a different level when it comes to people. See, but what most of you want to do, you want to stoop down to somebody else's level. They, they down here now, and they want you to, they, they, they want to bring you down. Come on, I'm, I'm for you. I get you. I, I cut you. And they want you to come down to their level, and you just so naive, you come on down there. Oh, okay, I'll come on down. They both get down in the gutter. Somebody says, stay above. Don't stoop to the lower level. Stay on high. Be in control. Smile. Love. You know, you know, you have to learn temperance and learn that some things are not worth it. Your reputation. You know, learn that. Learn that. Don't get in the gutter with people. Stay a notch higher than people. And the only thing, even people in your job, sometimes you, 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 can, you can have a very difficult time. And there are people that I do believe that God sends your way to help you. And to irritate you. You know what a wash machine does? It agitates. It just it gets get all the stuff. I, all the mama said all the dirt comes out in the wash. And it does. But learning to get along with people. Learn to embrace. Learn to forgive. Learn to overlook. I'm good at that. I can I overlook a lot of stuff. I'll go crazy if I don't. You drive me crazy. <laughs> just overlook it. Just pray about it. Just pray about it. Pray about it. You know, I'll be glad when John shows up on time and be there. And when John comes to Sunday, this is a blessing of the Lord. It's the Holy Ghost moving on him. At least he's making progress. He was at least he wouldn't come in but once a month. Now he's coming twice a month. It's great. You know, it's, I was doing something earlier, and um, you know, how can I say this right? Um, no, nah, no, nah, I'm gonna get in deep. I'm gonna get in deep water. You know what really changed my life, Fonda? Fonda. Yes, it's Terry changed my life. It did change my life. I said, what changed my life? Sister said, I did. <laughs> I wasn't talking about that. <laughs> what really changed my life was when I started reading the Gospels. And I saw how Jesus treated people. You know, you know, I was saying to myself the other day, you know, I went out, and I, I'm, I'm going to bring that up, I ain't going to go there, because y'all think I'm crazy. But, you know, 
I saw how Jesus treated the, the leper. I saw how Jesus treated the, the woman at the, at the well. I saw how he treated Mary Magdalene. Centurion. He didn't go around condemning people. Jesus' whole motto, listen to me, church. Jesus' whole motto was to lift people. You know who he condemned? Those religious folks. Tell my pastor, you better not let them down. Leave them religious folks alone. They're so religious, they forgot how they forgot what it means to be lost. You know that you can forget what it really means to be lost. When you was when you wasn't in the church and you wasn't saved, you're doing crazy stuff too. You was out all tight for night, joking and jiving. You don't call it that no more. I don't care what you call it. But you was hanging out, and, you know, you didn't dress like you should. And, you know, you didn't, you know, you was you was drinking. The other day I, I made a comment on I was preaching the other day and I said I, I, I was drinking some some rum and coke. So I said, You drunk? You can't not you. bragging on anything. I was just, I was just, I, I, I wasn't a drink. I was just doing it because everybody else was doing it, you know. And sometimes we do things because of other people. But what I am saying, you know, understand that when people don't know, they don't know. When you was in, this, in the world of sin, you didn't do everything right either. I mean, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't get everything right. You didn't. I mean, you. I mean, you did what you know you thought was right. Maybe you were shacking. Maybe you were, you know, you were just you was a drunk. Maybe you, you drank a lot, or and you beat up, you know, Sally or Billy or whatever. And, and, and you didn't know that when God saved you, somebody got somebody said, "God saved me." God, God gave you a second chance to get it right. Hey, don't, I'm coming to a close. Don't think about jumping out of the boat of the church because things are not where they need to be or people are not what they say they are. Stay in the boat because the world is sinking down, I'm telling you, church. As long as Noah stayed in the boat, he was saved. Stand with me this morning. Stand with me this morning. Praise God. Somebody say, Praise the Lord. Praise Look at somebody else and say, I love you in the Lord. It's hard for some people to say that, isn't it? It can be hard. Somebody say, I love my church. You know what that means? That means I love you. I really do. No matter how mad Brother Albert Paul make me mad, I want to love him. I really am. He comes in late. I'm still going to love him. He cooked the bacon crisp. I'm still going to love him. No matter what he does, I'm going to love him. That's what, you, that's what you do when you love people. You forgive people. You move on. You learn to appreciate and value people. You know, and, you know, I love my wife. Come on, honey. Come on, baby. 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 Come on honey. Come on. You was bragging a few minutes ago and said all that stuff. Now I'm putting you on the spot. I do. I love my wife. We've been married 30, uh, 34 years. 33 years. 33 years. Almost 33 years. Now, she's the love of my life and she made me, made me happy. But let me say this to you. We had our issues too. But you don't just throw the baby out with the wash water. You don't, you, you know, marriage and relationship is about forgiving, forgiving, and forgiving. 
If not, you ain't going to be married very long. That's right. That's what it's all about. Why can't we do the same thing in the church? Why can't we forgive? And everybody's got a personality. I mean, seriously. But Shan, I can't say you have a personality. I really can't. And I, he, he is so blah. Poor brother Anthony Rose, Lord of mercy, no personality whatsoever. Nothing moves brother Anthony. He just, ha, ha, ha. You know, and you learn to work with people from where they are. No matter what you do, some people are not going to get involved in nothing. Really. And uh, you learn to work with it. And you pray for people. Somebody say you pray for people. You pray for people. Here's the Bible says, if you see your brother in the fall, he that is spiritual, do what? And bear the infirmity of the weak. In a spirit of what? Meekness. You know, if you want to correct somebody, don't go all in their face and do it. Just be, be kind. In a spirit of meekness, the Bible says, restore such a one. In a spirit of meekness, restore. And you understand that if, if you've been married any length of time, then you understand this. If not, you ain't going to be married very long. And you have to learn, you know what, even a family. I have two boys and I have a girl. And you know what, we're all family. We don't get along all the time. Everybody want to do their own thing. You know, and that's just part of family. And you learn to work through it, you know. You learn to work through it and go through it. And you know what? And as kids get older, I'm going to teach a class on how to handle kids when they get over 18. I've decided I'm going to teach a class because I got some experience. Uh, yeah, I do. I'm, I'm, I've learned a lot. Because they think they, they, they're grown. You can't live their life for them. Come on, mama. Mama. But I'll close with this today. Loving each other is critical. And because you have differences, doesn't mean you gotta be you gotta you gotta be terrible or be rude. Learn to look over some things. Learn to overlook things. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 13. It's all put it on the screen. 1 Corinthians 13. Now, come on, come on, baby, come on. Baby. Where are you going? Where are you going? She always embarrassed me. I'm going to embarrass her. Oh, no, I got her. Got her good. Got her good. Got her good. Got her good. The best is yet to come. The Bible says this. Though I speak with tongues of men and angels, they have not charity. I become a sound in brass and a tinkling sound. Though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have faith so that I can move mountains, I have not charity, I have nothing. But though I bestow my body, my goods to feed the poor, though I give my body to be burned, I have not charity or love, it profit me nothing. He says, charity suffers long. Is kind. Charity envy is not its charity advantage not itself. It's not puffed up. Does not behave itself unseemly. Seek not her own. Not easily provoke. Think no evil. Rejoice not in iniquity, but rejoice in truth. Verse 7, it bears, I must say it bears all things. Believeth all things. And what hope is all things? And what? Endure all things. Somebody clap your hands to the Lord. Love. You know, learn to overlook faults. You know what? If you're looking for trouble, you'll find trouble. If you're looking for faults, you'll find faults. 
one man said it like this. He was he was listening to, he said he was in the Madison Square Garden. He heard those crickets. And the man said, I hear a cricket. He said, what? He said, yes, I hear a cricket. And the man said, he found the cricket. He said, how did you hear the cricket? He said, I was listening. I, listened, I was listening for it. Whatever you're listening for, you don't, you don't, you're here. If it's criticism, strife, whatever you're listening for, you're going to hear. Division. But when, you start, when you start, listen to me, when you start looking at people for the, for the better, and you start expecting better things, you'll start getting better things. Yes, there are people who are hard to deal with in life because you know why? They've been treated wrong in their life and so they want to treat somebody else wrong. But take the higher ground. Someone said the higher ground. Take someone by the hand right now. We're going to pray for that person next to you this morning. I don't know. Maybe someone just offended you. Maybe somebody did you wrong. Maybe you're thinking of somebody in your home or somebody, your friend, or something that took place that you got hurt. You got hurt over. Maybe you felt you was injustice done to you. Maybe you felt somebody didn't appreciate and value you for what you give. I want us to pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, let the love of God be shed in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. Give us a love for you, a love for your people. Let us realize, Lord, that to love people is the greatest commandment. There is no greater commandment than to love that neighbor of that self. God, give us a love. Let the spirit of forgiveness come over us, forgiving each other of our wrongs. And God, to overlook faults, whether it's a song, whether it's a person or a thing, how something is done doesn't make a difference. Father, help us to love like you love. And care like you care. Lord, forgive us of our sins, of our shortcomings and our failures. Father, we repent right now. Offended my brother, my sister, forgive me. Offended my wife or my husband, forgive me. Offended my children, forgive me. Offended my mother and father, forgive me. And Lord, help me. In Jesus' name. When you lift your hands toward heaven right now, begin to worship him and thank him right now. We do that. Come on, all over this building. Come on. That's it. Yes. Thank you, Lord. I won't harm you with the words of my mouth. I need you to survive. I won't harm you with the words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to survive. It is his will that every need he be supplied. Next year. Survive. So you are important. You are. 